everybody. Uh, I just wanted to give a little preview of the week ahead. Um, so on Tuesday, I guess that's tomorrow, we are going to start on the ecological crisis. That's going to be the first ethical issue that we check out. So that's uh, chapter 15, starts on page 309 of the fourth edition. Um, <clears throat> If you're working from edition of uh, another edition, you can easily find the chapter that's the ecological and economic crises. And we'll just be starting with the first of those crises um, and looking at a number of different religious perspectives you'll see in the chapter. So what I wanna to ask to you is to find one of those religious perspectives that seems interesting to you for whatever reason. Um, so go ahead and just peruse that chapter. Peruse actually used to mean a very thorough looking through. I think we use it now to mean kind of flipping through, uh, scanning or whatever. But the idea is just to hone in on one of the religious responses that you could look through, maybe even you might research a little bit on the internet, uh, but most importantly, uh, show up to class with a little something to say about uh, what uh, Jainism or Christianity or Taoism or Islam or whichever one you choose uh, from the many presented, uh, what that religion provides us with a perspective on nature in general and how that might be used to address the current ecological crisis. Um, okay, um, I'm going to take uh, Hinduism, or at least that's what I'm gonna focus on, is the elements of Hinduism that are particularly relevant to the ecological crisis. These are discussed in the chapter a bit. Um, <clears throat> and then on Thursday, we are going to be into Hinduism, we'll be starting on Hinduism, that's chapter three, and basically starting in, uh, starting our first real inquiry into the nature of one of the world's fur major religions. So uh, this will be the first one. Um, so yeah, on Thursday, uh, I guess the things to focus on is really the worldview of Hinduism. There's lots of interesting history, and um, it's just a very rich, complex, very interesting religion. And really, we're only going to be able to get through, well, through the parts of it that I'm kind of selectively uh, choosing to discuss. But the worldview is always going to be right at the hub of things for all of the religions that we examine. So you may very well uh, start there. And we'll probably be on Hinduism, I don't know, two or three full class periods. Um, maybe a couple things uh, we might think about is karma, the law of karma, what is it? Um, and freedom. Does the law of karma really allow any room for free will as we ordinarily understand that concept that when we make choices, we do so freely, at least most, if not all the time. And that's what really differentiates human beings from mere things or even from lower order brutes, as they used to be called in Western philosophy, at least, that Descartes uh, would call the animals not capable of rational thought brutes. And uh, one thing that would seem to distinguish us from some other parts of nature uh, is our capacity for free will, free choice. However, uh, if karma does indeed determine our future lives in some broad sense, the very idea of determining being determined by seems to be at odds with the idea of freedom. Um, Indeed, there's a classic philosophical problem we call free determinism and free, to, free will, uh, the problem of free will, um, which doesn't exactly come from the law of karma, 
more the law of physics, like if your brain, and including the rest of your body, is governed by the law of physics, because your brain, like um, the rest of your body, is a material entity that is presumably governed by the laws that govern all material entities, i.e. the laws of physics, how then can we make any room for freedom? That doesn't seem to be the version of it that we're worrying about here because we're worried about karma rather than laws of thermodynamics, but if karma has that same deterministic um, power or feature, the same kind of worry about how we can be both ruled by karma and free is raised, and so we will raise it and pursue it. And I've got some ideas on how they might be reconciled. Um, all right, so uh, that might be one philosophical issue that we take a look at. And that should be the week ahead. I'm working on your study guide, not literally as I speak now, because that would be too much multitasking. But uh, after I'm done recording this, I will be uh, making a study guide for Hinduism and or Buddhism, hopefully both today, but certainly Hinduism, and that'll be up soon. All right, I'll see you guys next week, or Tuesday, starting the next week. Great, okay, over and out.